Well, hello, lovely. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. It's Autumn, and I want to talk to you guys about tinctures. So, have you ever used an herbal tincture before? Do you know what an herbal tincture is? If not, then please stay with me for a couple of minutes and let me share the beauty of this ease of dose herbal medicine. So, tincture. So, when we're talking about herbs, we want to be able to preserve them in different ways, right? So, herbs after two to three years, they start losing their therapeutic efficacy. So it's always best, you know, to store them in glass jars, to be able to keep them out of light, to keep them at a regular temperature when you're storing your herbs. But to take it to a different level and a new level would be to be able to make a tincture. So a tincture is very, very simple. So you really need to have a jar of some size. It doesn't have to be this half gallon one that I have right here. You could absolutely start with using very, very small jars in order to be able to make a tincture. But a tincture is going to be an herb extraction or infusion via using a certain menstruum, right? So we are going to be using alcohol is usually the primary one that folks use. And there are alcohol constituents, alcohol, um, so there's um, constituents that will come out in tea, different ones that will come out with alcohol. And then also, if someone is sensitive to alcohol or can't have alcohol, you can make a tincture with apple cider vinegar, like we do with fire cider, or you can make it with vegetable glycerin and kind of water and be able to dilute it out and pull. So, if there's a child or somebody that um, is in recovery or just cannot have alcohol for some reason, then there are different methods to be able to dose. So just keep that in mind. I usually talk about alcohol tinctures because those are the main ones that I use um, with myself, clients, and family, and things like that. However, the apple cider vinegar and the vegetable glycerin, glycerin ones are definitely very supportive and have high efficacy as well when thinking about it from a therapeutic perspective. So when we're talking about making a tincture, so this is a passion flower tincture that I have right here, a Passiflora incarnata. So pass, um, passion flower actually changes the way our nerves react to stress over time pretty sweet. So I, I just grabbed this one off of, off of my desk, but basically you've seen me probably do other tincture videos. So I fill probably to about right here, um, you know, a little less than half, maybe half if you really want to. And then I fill the rest with alcohol. I do go up to this top inch head space. That's right where the band lid is. And so what you'll do is you'll just fill it with alcohol, fill, fill it with herb as high as you want, and then you fill it with the alcohol or the apple cider vinegar or the vegetable glycerin and water ratio mix, depending on what you're doing. And then a tincture, you're going to want to let it sit a minimum of six weeks. Now, the next day I would check it and make sure you don't need to add any more fluid or what they call menstruum to it. And then the herb itself is called the mark. M-A-R-K. So you may hear herbalists talk about the mark, the menstruum, that's really the herb and the fluid that you're using, right? So, and when you're making a tincture, sometimes you may make it a little bit stronger if somebody really needs that um, higher dose. So like for a um, someone with Parkinson's, you would probably want to make the cramp bark a little bit more concentrated than you would otherwise, otherwise right? Um, if I'm trying to move people in fertility, I might have a little bit more concentrated Vitex versus if somebody's just dealing with some menstrual cramps or something, right? So, um, so that's kind of, you know, you can make them different, different strength and ratios and things, but, but you don't have to, don't feel like you have to know an exact ratio. You have to have an exact formula or something to be able to make these herbal medicines. Really be empowered and know that there is beauty in the imperfection, in the imperfect action. There is still beauty happening, right? Like I've made some tinctures that don't taste good. It's okay. You just add some honey or drop them with some orange juice or whatever, right? It's going to be okay. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, just have fun and experiment. You don't have to make simples. So I make simples like this is a passion flower one. I have Vitex, I have cramp bark and turmeric and things. 
And so I make simples because I like to make formulas on demand. So if you have a number of simples, then you can concoct somebody a tincture formulation on demand with the ratios that are going to be good for them. So it's just really awesome to be able to have the simples. However, I have a number of tinctures that I do traditionally as a mix, like I tincture all five or all eight of the herbs together in order to catalyst and make a specific beautiful, yummy, therapeutic and supportive formulation right so so don't feel like there's these just like gardening and cooking there's like beauty in the imperfection right so <laughs> um it can be a lot of fun so you want to let the tincture sit a minimum of six weeks now um i keep mine out of direct light my herbal teacher ellen zimmerman she kind of kept them in dappled light on her windowsill so um but i keep mine in this room that has blackout curtains when i'm not filming for you guys and then um <clears throat> you actually want to keep it pretty temperature regulated you know it's good to to go tighten the lid shake the sucker up just a little bit right in order to be able to help infuse and fuse it with your energy your intentions for it especially if you're going to be utilizing this as a gift you want to really infuse those intentions and the new moon coming up is a wonderful time to be able to do that the new moon is always when i make my lady formulations and tinctures and stuff right um and then after the six weeks i mean i have some tinctures honestly you guys that have been probably sitting in there like a year or two you know just a little stronger it's okay I just haven't strained them yet and that's okay too if you forget about a tincture sitting there don't be like oh my gosh I let it sit there like half a year and now it's just trash no it's not it's still beautiful and actually probably a little bit of a stronger formulation so feel free to go ahead and um, yeah utilize that so I'm gonna pause and have you guys um, give me some thumbs up some hearts if this is resonating with you let me know if you have any questions about tinctures I'm gonna try and address them before I get off the live and then I always try to answer all the questions within the first 24 hours of a video going out so um, so what you're gonna do is and you can see in my feed on my YouTube channel um, how I and um, I put them all on my, my website too. So there's a lot of places where you can go and you can actually see me straining a number of tinctures. So I will use kind of a noodle strainer. I'll place it in a big old bowl like this in order to help hold. And then I'll put some cheesecloth in there and then pour this through and just strain it and squeeze it with my hands with some gloves on, right? Um, and if I'm making a formulation and I'm talking to you guys, I usually wear a mask now just because I don't want to be, I mean, who wants my spittle in their tincture? I mean, like, come on come on around, right? <laughs> so it's part of my good manufacturing practice now. So it's always good to have as clean techniques as you can. Um, but the dosage, so the beautifulness of the dosage of the tinctures, right? So you can actually use a little funnel that I get on Amazon and then I fill the tincture bottles. So the beauty of it is that a dropperful or two dropperfuls of tincture is equal to a cup of tea therapeutically. So a lot of my clients are really, really busy and they don't have time to be able to take a tea all the time and make a tea all the time. It's a beautiful ritual. I love to do it. Um, but not all my clients have the time to be able to do so. So what we'll do is we'll make um, a tincture and a formulation for them to be able to dose on demand. You can carry it in your briefcase, in your purse, whatever the like. Now this is a this is a formulation that I haven't tasted yet. This is like one that I've made with a lot of leftovers. Like, so this is a personal leftover. We're gonna see what happens with this. But you just kind of squeeze it and you draw it up and about 30 to 60 drops is a dose, right? So every dropper is different. You wanna kinda of count when you get your dropper and see, do I need one dropper full for dosing? Do I need two? And it can depend on the person, right? So sometimes for cramps, some people will need two dropper fulls. For my Parkinson's clients, it can be six to eight dropper fulls in order to help them therapeutically. So um, that's the beautiful gentleness of the herbs, right? And then you just dose it and put it right on top of your tongue. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can also put it in a, like when I started doing Vitex for my endometriosis, I would put it in a shot of orange juice because it just helped kind of the medicine go down. Right. But now I'm good with her. We have a good relationship. I can just drop her her. Now you want to be careful if you're sharing droppers with other people that they don't touch their mouth with it. Right. You want to really practice maybe being at home, putting your, <laughs> your mouth back and dropping it. Um, now the cool and fun thing that you can do with tinctures is they don't have to just be the straight alcohol or the apple cider vinegar, right? 
You can actually add some honey to it, just like we do with fire cider to kind of sweeten it as an immune tonic. But then I also like my my Sweet Kava Embrace and my Ashwagandha Rose Elixir and my Valerian Elixir, all of those have honey within them. And then with my nettles and my lemon balm, I added lemongrass syrup just to be able to cut that a little bit. Um, compliance is everything with herbal medicine, right? So if you can't take it, then it's not going to work. So that's kind of some of the tricks that I use um, with my tinctures. But if you ever hear me talking about a tincture, that's what I'm talking about. It's basically an extract um, of the herbs. You can actually see on my homepage, autumnschultz.com, I have a fire cider 25-minute uh, video that I've put together in a PDF. If you haven't grabbed that yet, it's free. Go ahead and grab that if you're wondering about an apple cider vinegar tincture. Um, and then, let's see. What else? So you want to make sure in the final formulation that you have 20% alcohol in order for shelf stability and preservation and not having to leave it in the fridge. So there can be some ratios depending. So really when I add honey or when I add syrup, I add it at about 20% max to the tincture. So that way you're, you still have shelf stability. Um, yeah, and other than that, I mean, the old herb, the mark, after I've done this, you can put it in um, compost, you know, if you don't want to throw it away. So that can be very helpful. Um, and then let me see if there are any, let's see, there's a couple of questions here. So let me look. Thank you guys for being here. Go ahead and say hi. Tell me where you're watching from. Have you made tinctures before? Has this been helpful? So how do you make glycerin tinctures with fresh herbs to ensure they do not spoil quickly? So um, a lot of times I use dried herbs in my tinctures just because like of like the amount that I use and things, I just can't grow that much. However, I would do what they call dry wilted, right? So you want to be able to leave the herb out um, on a drying rack, maybe in a, I just, sometimes I used to use like a cooking cooling rack with a clean one with a paper towel on top and you could just dry the herbs there. So you wanna like dry garble them is what we used to call it in herb school where you would let it dry a day or two. So it's just like a soft dry. You get a lot of that initial moisture kind of out of it, right? Um, if you're having a problem with your glycerin tincture, maybe turning, right? Um, you may wanna go all the way and have it fully dry. For some things that may need to be what happens because the vegetable glycerin isn't as as much of a preservative as the apple cider vinegar or alcohol right so you may need to to do it just a, a little bit differently um so that's what i would do i would suggest karen that you do some dry garble and just let it dry a few days and see how that works if not then um, you may want to go to fully dry herb, depending. And depending on where you live, there could be moisture in the air that affects things. I mean, there's all kinds of different things, right? Um, and let's see, any other questions? Ooh, Audrey making tinctures now. Christina, you like to make them too? Um, Audrey's in Indianapolis, awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. I just, I hadn't done like a video about tinctures and I was like, well, Maybe I should so that people know kind of what I'm talking about and everything, but they're just a beautiful way and something that I fold into my coaching practice um, to be able to give my clients personalized support. So um, yeah, a lot of fun and a lot of magic in it. So I hope that this has been helpful and encouraging and I really want you guys out there making your remedies. Let me know if I've inspired you to make any remedies. Show me the remedies. Send me some pictures on Facebook. Tag me. I'd love to see what you guys are doing and let me know if you do make tinctures, what is your absolute favorite tincture to be able to, to, be able to make? I'd love to hear about it. Now, if you found this helpful, feel free to sprinkle it and um, um, share the love amongst your community if you think that this would be helpful for somebody else. Um, I think that it's just awesome basic knowledge that we need to not forget how to be able to utilize these plants as medicine. So until next time, let me make sure there's no other questions. Let's see here. Okay. April's making lemon balm tincture. First was mullein echinacea and lavender. I love it. Yum, 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 yum. Apple cider vinegar, do you let it sit as long? Yes, so I let it sit at least six weeks, just like the other tinctures. Um, and then, like, I have some fire cider that I've had in there brewing since, like, last January. <laughs> so that is some fire cider. Okay, and I haven't strained it yet. So if folks buy fire cider among the next couple of months off of my website, they will be getting <laughs> pretty strong fire cider. Um, 
which is good. We need it right now. Yeah. To be able to protect ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump off. Like I say, I've got some really exciting stuff. I've got a new course that I'm releasing to you guys on Friday. I've got a new membership doo -doo 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 -doo, that I'm going to be talking about Friday. So I'm really excited. So be looking forward to that. Tomorrow I'll probably release a, um, you know, a notification that says when I'm going to be going live, making those notifications. But I want to be able to share the love, share the herbal medicine with more people. And so this is how we're going to be able to do it. So anyways, I love it, guys. Thank you so much. Drop me a comment below. Let me know. Hashtag replay that you are here. And until next time, love and light, everybody. Take care of yourself.